All right, there you have it. World's best chicken curry. All right, this has been a real labor of love. We're gonna test this out. We're gonna see if it really is the world's best chicken curry. Hey everyone, I'm Dave and today we're making the world's best chicken curry. Well, at least we hope so. As always on this channel, we look up the number one recipe on Google, we try it out, and we see if it really is the world's best. So let's get started by looking up a recipe here. World's best chicken curry. Okay, it looks like our number one recipe is from cookingclassy.com, which I've never heard of, but they apparently have good SEO when it comes to curry making. I'm excited about this. I've never made curry, but I've eaten plenty of curry. And I, I went and I tried to find some curry videos on YouTube, and a lot of them are like just text with music, quickly going through ingredients to add. I've never been good at following that kind of a recipe. Personally, I've kind of needed someone to walk me through a recipe. And that's what I do on this channel. We'll walk you through it. We'll try it. If I screw up, I'll notice <laughs> and I'll let you know or the comments down below will let you know. But in the end, we're gonna test this. We're gonna see if it really is amazing. And if it is, you'll know you can try to cook it. Let's get started. So the first step we have is to mix together all these spices. I mean, this is a lot of spices. Uh, it's basically Spice World, starring the Spice Girls over here in my house. Uh, and that was kind of expensive. Now, most of them I already had, luckily. But if you had to buy all these, I feel like it would add up. I did find this brand, Badia. Never heard of it before, Badia. And uh, it was a lot cheaper. It was like two bucks versus uh, McCormick, which was like six bucks, so. I don't know, that's something to look out for. But what we're gonna do first, we're gonna mix all these together in a little bowl and get ready to go. And you know, I like to keep it relatable here. So, so I have just a complete random variety of uh, measuring spoons cause that's all I can find, but that's okay. It'll do the trick. There we go, I added a cutting board. Look at this, I put down a hot like cast iron thing on this cutting board and I made like a big giant outline on it. So yeah, be careful with your cutting boards. I guess it wasn't sealed properly. I did buy it at like a flea market, so. You get what you pay for. I didn't pay much. All right, so first spice we're gonna grab is our coriander, ground coriander. And we need one and a half teaspoons of that. This is my one teaspoon. Oops, see it's good I put down this cutting board because it's gonna catch all my misses. One and, oh, look at that, that's frustrating. <laughs> Doesn't fit. Now I'm really gonna spill some. One and a half. There's our coriander. And I'll just set this off to the right so I know how to use it. And then we're gonna go on to the cumin. And we need one teaspoon of cumin. Drop that in there. Half a teaspoon of turmeric, turmeric, turmeric. I'm not sure how you say this one. Oh, this I had to buy brand new because I didn't have this one. All right, anyway, so half a teaspoon of the turmeric. It's very yellow, huh? It's crazy how yellow, it's like orange almost. Okay, set that aside. Does anyone actually use these big giant holes? Like who's gonna use that to dump it? I feel like you're never gonna get the measurement right. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people just pour turmeric over their meals and stuff. All right, fennel seeds is up next. It says a half a teaspoon of them, but this one has a special instruction. Special instruction. It says you need to put them in a Ziploc bag, like so. There you go, there's our fennel seeds in a Ziploc bag. Lay them down here on the table. And we need to beat them with a meat mallet. So here we go. I have people still asleep in my house, so this is gonna go poorly. My wife just yelled at me. <laughs> okay, anyways. So now we pour that in with the rest of the spices, like so. Basically you want much smaller pieces of the fennel seeds. And that did work, even though I got in trouble. It did work. I knew that would go poorly. Now we gotta add some cinnamon. So here's some cinnamon. I do this early in the morning because like, I take up the whole entire kitchen when I'm cooking. And like, the kitchen is connected to the living room. You know, open concept. So basically like the house is on lockdown while I do cooking videos, very inconvenient. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon is what I'm adding. And I'm actually trying to think of a way around it. But for now, I'm just the very inconvenient cooking guy in the house. But this is my thought. I think I'm gonna try to set up some outdoor equipment. Let me see, what's next? Uh, black pepper. And I think a lot of cooking channels do this and I never realized why until I started doing this myself. Oh my gosh, that was way too much black pepper. <laughs> half a teaspoon of black pepper, but it's because of how like all encompassing a setup like this is. I've got lights and cameras and stuff like that, and no one can come in here because of audio. And so 
I think that's why you see a lot of cooking channels doing their cooking videos out on their lanai or their patio or, you know, they'll build a gazebo outside. This is mustard powder, ground mustard. I need a quarter teaspoon. I can only find my one eighth teaspoon, so I'm just gonna do two measures of one eighth to get my quarter teaspoon of mustard powder. And then I need the same with ground cloves. So we're gonna do the same thing with the ground cloves. Ooh, these smell strong. One and two. Okay, so there's our spice mix. We've got all our spices mixed together. But yeah, I've been looking at like a little, cause I already have like a griddle top and a smoker out there. The only thing I don't really have is like stove eyes, but they do sell like camping stove things. I was thinking maybe I could get one of those and cook outside. They're only like 150 bucks. And then I can move this whole production outside and maybe get a table for prep work. I don't know, it might not look as good, but at least it wouldn't be as annoying and in the way for the whole family. So, small problem. See, these are the behind the scenes that you never hear from other YouTubers. You don't understand all the ins and outs that go into it. Okay, so there's our spice mix for our curry. Let me clean this up, I'll be right back. Okay, so anyways, I'm back. I had to get my onion, this is a yellow onion, ginger root, and garlic. And these are just basic prep work. I don't necessarily need to show you the whole thing, but basically we're just, what is it, a chopped onion, it is minced ginger, minced ginger. What does that mean? Minced garlic, minced ginger. Um, I guess that's chopped super fine, I guess. And then minced garlic. So yeah, I mean, minced, chopped, it's all the same, right? I mean, I don't think it is, but close enough. You technically only need one cup of onion, which is why I'm like being a little aggressive with my peel here. I think I will easily get a cup out of this size onion. You know, as I've said before, this is not a professional cooking channel. This is a standard run of the mill dad doing some cooking. And I think, you know, that's something that's been lacking in the YouTube world. A lot of the channels are super professional cooks, which is great to watch. I do watch these really talented chefs cook on here and I enjoy watching them, but kind of unrelatable when it comes to me cooking. I'm just like, hey, I could never do that. So this I think is a much more approachable cooking style. And I think this is how most people cook. They just go over to Google and say, man, I really want to try some chicken curry, but I don't want to go to an Indian restaurant to get some. So I'm just going to try to cook it myself because I got to save money. Money. And this is definitely a cheaper way to do things than going out to eat. You don't have to give a tip, although you could give yourself a tip if you do a really good job. This looks like more than a cup already, so it's really more like a half an onion, but I guess it just depends on your onion size. I don't know why, but onions never make me cry anymore. It's really weird. I feel like they used to make me cry so bad. Maybe it's because I was worse at chopping them and I would just get more juices up in the air. Lately though, I just never, never get the tears on when I'm cooking with onions. Kind of sad, I miss the crying, you know? Right, let me measure this. Oh yeah, we're well over a cup, I think. Eh, maybe not, hold on, let's load it in here. Perfect. One cup of onions is what it calls for. Chopped, does it say chopped? Yeah, chopped. One cup of chopped onions. So let's set that aside. That's good to go. Okay, so I've got this ginger root. I need one tablespoon of ginger root. Uh, and this is a lot more than that. So I'm just gonna take off like a little module here and I am gonna peel it. I've never used this peeler before. There we go. So this is a peeler someone sent me. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I usually use the old style, but this one's pretty good. So we're just gonna peel this off. Now, I don't think it explicitly says to, but I think it's common knowledge that you don't eat the, the skin on a ginger root, right? That's common knowledge, I think. Oh gosh, slippery little bugger. And we got this weird little chunk of brown in here that I'm gonna cut out. There we go. All right, so now we got a little ginger root. Let's cut it up. Wow, this is hard. Ginger roots are tough. Goodness gracious. We only need a tablespoon. So I'm trying to not waste my energy and cut too much. I should probably go get a tablespoon measure. Here's one. Let's see if this is actually enough and then we'll chop it more finely. Yeah, that's gonna be plenty. So now let's just mince it. That is a very hearty aroma, without a doubt. Anyways, one tablespoon of ginger, set it aside with the onion, nice and minced, good to go. Okay, last and certainly not least is the garlic. And I think we need four cloves. There you go, four cloves of garlic. Let's peel those and mince them as well. These are big cloves of garlic, holy cow. Yeah, I don't know if my chicken curry video will rise to the top of the search results, but when I currently search YouTube, the chicken curry videos leave a lot to be desired if you're just looking for like a simple tutorial as a beginner on how to cook some chicken curry. So, I personally have never cooked chicken curry, but <laughs> I, I tend to do decent at reading through instructions and I found these instructions online. They're pretty good. This is supposed to be the best one according to Google. So I think we can make a really solid chicken curry. And if you need help, this could be the video to get you there. 
or we could end this video off deciding that I am the world's worst chicken curry maker and you will know all the things not to do when making chicken curry. These are seriously enormous cloves. Like these four cloves of garlic are like the size of a whole head of garlic for me. I might reduce it a little. Maybe I'll just take a little bit out because it was, they were such big cloves. I think that's probably good right there for my garlic. This will be like the most triggering thing you see in my whole video. I'm gonna use this pan to cut my chicken because all my cutting boards are dirty and I don't really wanna use the wooden ones with chicken. I know you can, but I don't want to because then I, I can't put my wooden cutting board in the dishwasher because it damages the finish. So if I can't do that, then I'd rather not, then I need like a plastic cutting board, but my plastic cutting board is super dirty right now. Dishwasher's full. I'm a real like uh, slacker when it comes to the dishes. And hey, you know what? That's probably relatable to some of you, you know? <laughs> Your dish status defines how you cook. That's certainly how it works for me. So with this, we just wanna cut cubes out of our chicken breast and we need a cup and a half of chicken breast. Is that, is that right, a cup and a half? No, a pound and a half of chicken breast. One and a half pounds of chicken breast. And it looks like in these cases, there's one and a quarter pound in each one. So I guess I need to open the second one too. So I'm just cutting cubes. Sharp knives are good, and this is a very sharp knife. So you can see I'm having no trouble getting through it all. I don't want too big of cubes because then it's gonna, they're gonna cook uneven. We're trying to get them all similarly sized. And this is just chicken breast cut into cubes, one and a half pounds. And that's gonna be the meat for the curry, of course. And since that's one and a quarter, we only need like a quarter pound more. So probably right here. Is that a quarter pound? That might not be. Oh, this one's a little frozen. See that? Anyways. I think that's about one and a half pounds. There's like little ice particles on the chick chick. Pretty cool, okay, so we got our chicken prepped. Let me uh, put this away. So as is typical, I missed one thing. Let me push the chicken back here. I forgot to chop the cilantro. Ooh, the cilantro has seen better days, but I don't need much of it. Let me go wash it and get some. All right, here I am again with cilantro this time. Nice and washed. We're just gonna chop that up. We need two tablespoons of it chopped which this is more than enough. So there's plenty of cilantro. Let me measure it out. One tablespoon. That was a heaping tablespoon, but I like cilantro. Two tablespoons, there we go. Yeah, it chopped way too much. All right, so we got our cilantro too. All right, so we're gonna head over to the oven and we're actually gonna get to cooking this curry. It should be delicious. Let's get to it. We've got pretty much everything ready. We've got some other ingredients like heavy cream that we'll measure when we're over there. Okay, so we're over here at the stove. I've got a 12 inch skillet on the stove burner. I've got my heat set to medium high. What we wanna do is add some olive oil to the pan, like two tablespoons worth. And basically what we're doing at this point is making the sauce. So we're gonna get this oil nice and hot, then add in our onions and saute them. All right, so let's put in the onions. Get a little sizzle and just move them around a little bit. Now oh, the whole pan's moving around. And we're gonna saute these for, I don't know, four to six minutes, I would say. And I would just move them around every now and then, maybe every minute or so you can move them around. I won't make you sit here and watch this whole thing, but we'll be back when they're closer to done. All right, in uh, the interest of being productive while the onions cook, let's go ahead and measure out our heavy cream. We need one third cup of heavy cream. This is my heavy cream I'm using. Here's my measure, measure, -er, measuring cup. One third, one third, there it is. Eh, right there. One third cup heavy cream, set that aside. So another thing we can do is take our diced tomatoes. This is a big can of diced tomatoes. What does the recipe call for? Three quarters of a cup. And I bought this giant thing. So I'm gonna, un, I'm gonna open it and then I'm gonna peel, wait, not peel, <laughs> it's already peeled. I'm going to drain it. I need just a tiny amount of these diced tomatoes. Three quarters of a cup. So let me get that out of here. So there you go. I've got about three quarters of a cup of diced tomatoes with the liquid poured out. Move these onions around a little bit more starting to smell really good. This recipe also calls for a cup of low sodium chicken broth, which I did find. Chicken broth, see it says low sodium, 33% less. I bet it's still got a lot of sodium though. And we need one cup of that. I'm out of, I'm out of glass measuring cups, liquid measuring cups, so I'm just gonna use this dry measuring cup. Not the best way to do it, but it'll work. Mmm, chicken broth. It smells like a fart. All right, so I set that aside. Onions are coming along well. I'd say we're almost where we wanna be with them. So yeah, these onions are turning golden brown. It says till they're golden brown. It doesn't, I don't think it means completely golden brown, but these brown edges, I think is more what it's referring to. So we're gonna call that good to go. And we're gonna do the next step, which is to add the ginger root and the garlic that we cut up, which is what I'm doing now. We're gonna stir that together for about 30 seconds, making those fragrant as well. 
this bowl or this skillet really wants to spin away from me. It's frustrating. <laughs> it's about to get real smelly in here because the next thing we're going to do, guys, is add that spice blend that we did. That whole blend of spices in a couple seconds here, maybe 10 more seconds. Okay, let's add it. So this is our spice blend we made earlier. All those random spices, you know, the spice world. We're gonna mix that up for 30 more seconds. Ooh, that's an intense smell. Man alive. It smells like Christmas dinner. Actually, it smells like when I go to an Indian restaurant, if I'm honest. Okay, so up next, after you let this simmer for 30 seconds, you're gonna add the chicken broth and the tomatoes. So remember you had that cup of chicken broth. Ooh, that smells crazy. Uh, probably 10 more seconds and we're going to add that stuff. Okay, first off, the chicken broth. And then up next, the tomatoes. Now we're going to mix this all up. Beautiful. Beauty, beauteous Maximus. All right, so that's all mixed in. Now, now we want to get this to a boil. It's not going to take long. It's already on the edge of boiling. I'd say maybe another 25 seconds and it's boiling. We're then going to get a lid. So if you don't have a lid, go grab one. I know that shouldn't be hard, but for someone who's disorganized, oh yeah, we're boiling. Okay, so put the lid on, like so. Actually, let's stir it one more time. Then we'll put the lid on. We're gonna reduce the heat to a medium low. Right, get on there, lid. Get on there better. It fit a minute ago, now it's not fitting. Oh well, good enough. <laughs> My lid's not fitting right. I think it's cause like the pan has now heated up, so it's not fitting perfectly. I'm not sure if it's the right lid for this, if I had to be honest with you, but that's okay. So reduce it to medium low, in between medium and low, and simmer for five minutes. So we're back. It has been five minutes of simmer time on this. Simmer time. Let's mix it up a little. So we're gonna take this off the heat and it's gonna go into our blender, all right? I know, a shocking turn of events. It's gonna go into our blender. So let me get that set up and I'll bring you over there. All right, so it says we need to blend this until it's like a puree, basically. So I've got it in my blender here. Sorry about the bad angle. Okay, that looks like a puree to me. Oh my gosh, Ooh, it shot at me. Hey, over there, camera's kind of far away. Oh yeah, and it's still really hot. <laughs> hey, is it looking like a curry sauce though? Hold on, I'll show it to you. There you go. There's your curry sauce. It looks pretty good. It's super hot. I guess it didn't really matter how finely I chopped stuff since we were doing that anyways. Almost would have saved me some time to just chop it way less. This is approaching the messiest recipe I've ever made. All right, so I brought back over my skillet pan that we heated this stuff up in and we're gonna put this puree back in there. Look at that, beautiful. Beauteous Maximus. I feel like I might've missed a step. I feel like I should have already cooked the chicken a little, but maybe not. Let me look. Yeah, no. Okay, so we're heating this back up over medium high heat. Is it medium high? Yeah, put it back on the heat, medium high. I'm trying to get more out of this. I feel like I'm wasting a little, but whatever. So we put this back in over medium high heat. We're now heating up the sauce and then I think we're gonna add a little salt and pepper to taste. Yeah, it's already hot. Let's add a little salt and pepper to taste. Here's a couple pinches of salt. Here's a little bit of pepper. Gosh, it's hot. Mix that in a little. Then I think we're gonna add our chicken next, honestly. I think we're to that stage. Yep. We're gonna add in the chicken now. So go ahead, grab your chick chick and plop it into this curry sauce. All right, so we wanna mix this up. Ugh, I spilled a little of the curry sauce. And if you wanted to, you could add, according to the recipe, you can add some cayenne pepper at this point to taste. Does not give a measurement. You know, if you like cayenne pepper, if you like it spicy, this is where you would add some. I might add just a tiny bit. I'm not a huge spice fan, other than the aforementioned Spice Girls. We are gonna cover this again. Let me add a little bit of cayenne. Just a dash of that. There we go. Now, there was something in the recipe about cornstarch. I'm not sure when we would use that. It is looking like chicken curry though, isn't it? And it's smelling like chicken curry. So both good signs. It says to bring this to a simmer, you know, like little bubbles coming up. I'm supposed to be on medium high. I accidentally only set it to medium. It's already simmering. Okay, so the cornstarch is something you can do at the end to thicken the sauce. I just realized I didn't make any rice or anything. I might just like throw some boil a bag of rice together. Um, not the greatest rice, but fine. All right, so this is simmering. We're gonna bring it down to medium low heat. Put our lid back on like so. And this is gonna run for like eight minutes before we even, well, we can check it every now and then, but it's gonna be at least eight minutes before it's done, maybe longer. All right, like I said, being a bit lazy, I've got a bag of rice <laughs> in some water. I'm gonna turn it on high, uh, basically four cups of water. I'll show you the box. We use this when we're in a rush and want some rice. Really easy. 
not the best rice. It's not what they're doing at the Indian restaurant, but you know what, we're at, we're at home. We're going easy mode. Put that in the pot, boil the water, and then once it boils, timer for 10 minutes, and then that rice should be done and we'll have it to go with our curry. Let's let this chicken cook for the next eight minutes or so, and we'll be back. So we're back eight minutes later. I did stir it once in between. It was looking pretty good. Let's take it off and look at it here. Yeah, I mean, that's starting to look really quite a bit like curry. Over here, we do have that boil in a bag rice going. It's got like nine minutes left. This, on the other hand, is probably pretty close. So you see how thin this sauce is? You can actually thicken that up. And I think we're gonna do it because I think it looks a little too thin to me. You can thicken it or thin it. If you wanna thin it, if it's too thick, you add some chicken broth. But if you wanna thick it, you gotta use some cornstarch, which is what we're gonna do. Let me check the temp of the meat. Make sure we're not gonna get some salmonella here. 173, 180. Yeah, it's looking done. Yeah. The chicken is cooked, which is a good sign. Now let's thicken it up. Basically, if you wanna thicken it up, take a teaspoon of cornstarch, which is this stuff with like the corn picture on it, and two teaspoons of water, and mix it up in like a plate. There's my teaspoon of cornstarch. I just put it on the plate there, and now you can't. All right, so I basically just added the water to the cornstarch, and now I'm just gonna stir it up and make a slurry of cornstarch, like so. Okay, then we're gonna dump it in here. And that's just gonna be a thickening agent for our sauce. Stir that up again, get that all nice and integrated. At this point, we can take it off the heat and we're gonna stir in our cream. So in regards to our cream, we've just got, like I said, a third cup. We're gonna dump it in there, mix it in. And hopefully this is an amazing chicken curry, but I don't really know. I've never made one before. Let's just get that all mixed in. Yeah, it's looking the right color. There we go, chicken curry. Is it thick enough? I can't remember how thick curry sauce is supposed to be. I'm sure I could add more cornstarch if I wanted to. Let me bring this over to the counter. All right guys, so we're basically done with this curry. Uh, let me show it to you in the camera, huh? Looks like curry to me. The sauce again, I don't know. <sighs> Maybe I'll look up some recipes and see if it's let me look. Yeah, it looks right to me. I'm looking at the pictures of the sauce. Oh, we need the cilantro. So we're gonna plate it at this point. And I do have a little pita, right? I had a little pita. And I've got the rice cooking, and then I'll put some curry on the bed of rice. It's gonna be good. Let me just finish up the rice. I think it's like two minutes left, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so on the bright side, I realized my shirt had curry stains all over it before the grand finale, so that's pretty good. Last time I had something in my beard during the whole grand finale, so. Yeah, this is what makes it a real channel, guys. We're not professionals, we're just doing our best. This rice is done, let me get it out, get it on the plate, and we're gonna try this. Now don't get me wrong, I know there's cooking video snobs out there who will not like that I just use rice in a bag, but you know what? I'm not for you, maybe. <laughs> I'm an everyman, and every men sometimes want the easy path, and that can be rice in a bag. It always comes out decent, and that's good enough for me. All right, we got to plate it up. Let's throw a little cilantro on there. All right, there you have it. World's best chicken curry. All right, this has been a real labor of love. We're going to test this out. We're going to see if it really is the world's best chicken curry. Here we go. Mmm. It's very flavorful. We have another bite here. I would put a little more salt on it, I think. I did go pretty easy when it said add salt to taste, so it's not surprising that it's not super salty. But I'd rather let the person eating it add the salt based on what they like. All right, let's try this piece. Mmm. That was really good. I feel like I'm at an Indian restaurant. Look at that. We did it. <laughs> and I didn't have to leave the house. But I did make a huge mess and I've got to do like 8 billion dishes. But that's just because I'm a slop. Not necessarily because of the recipe. This is actually really good. Um, world's best? No, I can't say that. I think I've had better at um, Indian restaurants. But again, this isn't my go-to. Normally I do the butter tikka masala or whatever. And I think that's a different flavor profile. And that's kind of what I'm missing. When I'm thinking like straight chicken curry. This probably is just as good as anything I've had in a restaurant. Very delicious. Pretty easy to make, honestly. And I got my pita. This is going to be a great, a great meal for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any episodes and we'll see you next time.